We're so excited about having this lady every Monday in the month of September. Just hearing her story, how she grew up and the responsibility she had. When I was in Savannah, was the last week, and she was talking about the things she had to come through to get to where she's at. There's no surprise to me. That's where she is, who she is, and why she will hit the top of, of, of network market in ACN because she has a lot to, to go through, but she also understands she has a responsibility, and she has a, a big, broad shoulders, and she's carrying a lot of those broad shoulders hers. And you know what? Let me tell you something. You, let me tell you something else I got from my mentor. He said, I never measure a man or woman from the top of their head to the sky. He says, I measure from the shoulders up. How big are your shoulders? Without further ado, everybody, can we give a warm, warm Monday welcome to none other than Roxanne Corleone. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Thomas, everybody on the call. I appreciate you guys so much. And I love that you said that about the responsibility because that, that truly is what drives me. And that was my topic um, last week. So I, I appreciate you and just how much attention you really do pay to all of us. And um, it doesn't matter what level we are, who we are. Mr. Thomas, a lot of the leaders here in ACN, they truly care about you and seeing that you succeed. They will know you, your favorite food, your height, everything about you. Just because being that genuine person that actually listens to people, y'all, there's a reason why they are where they are in this business because that's what it takes, especially in a business like ours. So are you doing that to your prospects? Are you acting like that to the people we talk to? Are you truly listening, hearing their needs? One of my favorite questions to ask a prospect, even before we even get to showing the business, is something I learned from Mr. Dean Trolley is I asked him, I said, hey, if you had all the money in the world, all the time in the world, what would you be doing? What would you want to be doing? There was a kid I talked to last week, and he told me we had a conversation about his favorite car. That was a majority of our conversation before we even got into any ACN presentation. And then our goal was, hey, okay, how can I help you get closer to this dream car that you want? Not to help to, you to lose your job or, or leave your boss or take up all the time in your world to focus on ACN, but how can we help each other out where I can help you get to a little place to where you're going? And that truly came from the leader. So thank you so much, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Clemens, who always has this thing running without a hitch. I love, man, just a true example of how we need to work together. It doesn't matter what's going on. Sometimes there's internet issues. People got to catch flights. There's whatever the problem is, but we can't tell the difference because they keep this rolling. And um, thank you guys for that and being that example. So I know I already gave it away. But I do want to ask to see who's truly listening. What was our topic last week? It was drive, finding your drive. Yes, I can read Jackie Black's lips. Drive, absolutely, Rick, is identifying that drive. What drives you? And that goes beyond, and I mentioned um, our reason why. It goes beyond our motivation. It's what really drives you. And that was the point in telling you about my history because that that's actually – it's what progressed me here in ACN, as Mr. Thomas said, is that feeling that responsibility, but finding that drive, what drives you, what makes you get up in the morning for an 8 a.m. appointment when you don't want to. It's so easy to send that text, big man, I'm tired. Let me cancel. Like, hey, something came up. Can we reschedule for noon? Man, it is so easy to do that. And I've done that before in my locksmith company. I'm like, man, I don't want to get up today. I got calls all through the night. What drives us to not do that, to persevere, to push forward? And if you haven't found that out yet, that's okay. It's not something, my grandson is my drive. I love it, Sam Foster. Absolutely, your grandson is your drive. But I want you to dig deeper. What is it about your grandson? What is it that really pushes you? Because you could say your grandson is your drive, and then one day you guys are hanging out in the morning, you're like, I just want to hang out with this kid today. And I don't want to work. <laughs> that happens. So if we dig deeper, what really pushes us to excel and truly accomplish what we're meant to accomplish? Because we're not here just to stop at ETL or RC or even regional director. I mean, we have and we possess what it takes to get to these top positions. 
the future for my grandchildren. Absolutely. So my drive I had mentioned was helping other people. And that sounds pretty generic and basic, but it's true. I will bend over backwards no matter what I have going on in my life to help someone if they need my help, just because that's how I grew up. That's what I needed to do. That responsibility always laid on me. No matter what was going on, I had to leave school. I had these things I felt like I had to do. And if there was a morning where I wanted to cancel an appointment, I couldn't because I had this responsibility. I had people expecting me to be somewhere or do something. So that's what drives me. That's what motivates me to get up every single day to make these appointments, to do these things I have to do. So with ACN, how does that relate to ACN? Well, for me specifically, it's a team. We had um, a, well, sometimes some people building a team is not really the best thing for them. They, they have a hard time building a team, but they're great at getting customers. That's fantastic. What drives them to get customers? Let's push them to grow that way. People can hit and be exactly at my position with absolutely no team and that's okay. But for me, if I don't have a team, I really have so much more free time on my hands. I'm like, and eh, nobody's expecting me to do anything or be anywhere. I don't have to. <laughs> so what drives me is making sure I have a team. That is non-negotiable for me because no matter what, if someone needs me, if they need to hit this position, if they need to get customer qualified or get that executive team leader bonus, I have to be available for them no matter what's going on in my life, no matter how I'm feeling, no matter my travel plans and whatever is going on in the world. And what's so great is that if I do have a conflict for whatever reason, I have people I can lean on. Mr. Ryan Ruiz, hey, you know what? We only have a couple more days. I'm gonna be out of pocket for however many days, whatever the issue is. And I have him, Mr. Dean Trolley, people in other teams. I know Mr. Joshua Casey, if I gave him a call and I said, hey, I need help qualifying someone who's in the military, can you help me? He'll say, absolutely, just let me know when and where. So we have support that we can lean back on if there is any conflict. But for me, I need that team because that team is what drives me. So just a quick example, I had some girls that had signed up at the beginning of August. They had signed up as a rep and one of them was a friend of mine. And uh, she was kind of hesitant about signing up. I've done these things before. Um, I've made a little bit of money. It just doesn't really pursue, like turn out the way I want it to. I don't want it to take time away from my real estate business whatever excuses she had. And I told her, I said, hey, you know me. We've been networking together for a while. You send your clients to me anyway. You already have these services. Let's do this. Let's try it out. Just give it a month or two. I want you to really utilize me and let me help you get to where you want to go to. And she said, yes, absolutely, because I trust you. No matter what the situation was, I built that relationship where I've listened to her and I know what her needs are about her family and her grandkids and everything else. And she said, you know what? Yes, I'm going to do this because of you. So it wasn't only that she signed up, but then said, I need my sisters to be doing this with me too. We do everything together. And I said, absolutely. So it's not just her that I had on my heart that I need to hit these positions, but you know what? She edified me saying, Hey, if is anybody we want to do something with, like this with, it has to be Roxanne. She has our back no matter what. If we're going to succeed, we would only succeed with her. Pretty much is what she told them. So I'm like, oh my goodness. Now this pressure is on me to help the sisters. Well, no big deal. This is what I do. So the month goes on, a week goes on, and I'm calling these girls. They're answering me. You're sending text messages back. I'm busy. I have these closings. Cool. Just send me the client information. Let me talk to them then if you're too busy. Everything I can do to get these girls qualified. Now we are at the beginning of, or the end of August, and they don't have any services in their, their business yet. And I'm like, man, we're already hitting 30 days. What the heck is happening? And it's not like they join witness protection because they'll still message me back there, but they're too busy to talk. They're too busy to set up services. They're too busy to get this stuff happening. How many people have talked to people that have been busy? Absolutely. And we can't, it's so difficult to get in front of them and you don't want to be too pushy. And I say, you know what? No problem. Give me a call a little later. When does grandma leave? Someone said, oh, my grandma stopped by. Okay, great. When does grandma leave? Like, come on, let's get this in. A whole month goes by. And then what happens? At the end of the month, I said, you know what? I can't let them 
they expected me to help them. They expected to hit these positions for me, even though I'm trying and it just hasn't worked out. What can I do better? So they're in San Antonio. And as I mentioned, I moved to Lubbock. It's a five and a half hour difference. And so I said, you know what? I'm just going to drive out to San Antonio. I didn't create a time to meet with them. I just let them know, hey, I might be coming into town. And they're cool, cool. Just let us know when you come into town. So I drove five and a half hours out there. Hadn't even booked a room yet. I drove out to San Antonio, I messaged my friend. And she goes, okay, just come by my house. I have a client meeting right now. I walk into the house and she's like, okay, she tucks me away in her room while she's meeting with some new clients. <laughs> so I'm hanging out in this room, just doing my own regular work, waiting for her. An hour goes by. And then she's finally like, okay, we're almost done. Do you need water? Do you need anything? I'm so sorry. No, no, I'm cool. So then we start working and then she messages her sister and says, hey, Roxanne's here. Come over. Didn't tell her anything that we were working or signing up customers, anything like that. Her sister comes over. We work all night looking at their bills, checking phone compatibility, all the stuff we need to do. And I'm like, all right, it's getting late. I need to try to book a hotel. She's like, no, 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 you're cool. We have the spare bedroom. Go ahead and stay in their bedroom. So I told her essentially, I moved in. I'm moving in to make sure y'all are hitting what you need to hit. And that's what I did. Why? Because I felt in my heart, and that's what drives me, that it was my responsibility to get them there. No matter what excuses they came up, come, came up with, it was my responsibility to make sure we push through those things because they haven't done this before. I've been doing this for five and a half years. It is my job. So I sat there with them and both of them not only got qualified, but they both got five services in. So they both made a check. And I told them and I said, hey, you know what? It took us a month to do this, but essentially you can tell people you got paid in 48 hours because really you get all the services in one day, all the services show up the next. Then all of a sudden that's when you made your first check, but it's the story that we want. I did not promote the money. Both of them are successful, have their own businesses. And I hear a lot of people saying, hey, sit down with me. You're gonna lose this $200. You're gonna lose this fast start bonus. You're gonna lose that $500. No, I did not focus on the money coming in once. All I said is as we introduce people to this, the first question they're gonna ask is if you made money, we need a story. That's all we need to prove that this works, to show that you and I can help someone through this. We need to prove that it works. So we can't say eventually, or we're in it for the long run, we need to get this done and we need to get it done now. They caught that, they said, okay, no problem. What do we have to do? And so are you taking those steps to go above and beyond and look through the excuses people are telling you? Because life is going to happen. Stuff is going to happen. I've had people sign up and a sibling passed away the very next day. And, and no matter what stuff happens and we don't want to push people, I'd send someone up and they got COVID the next day. Like, man, oh man, we don't want to push them, but we want to let them know we're here for them more than just picking up a phone and saying, Hey, can we jump on zoom and set up your services? Because if they feel that you're only trying to get them qualified, so you get paid, it's not going to work. We have to make sure that we listen to them and we're there for them. So what happens when that drive goes away? So what drives me is helping other people. I have to have a team. And I've noticed too, is when I have a team and I'm working like diligently with my team, I'm so busy. That's when I get the most personal recruits. It's because that drive of other people needing me is what pushes and motivates me to go out and start peaking people, to start being in phase one, to start building another team and start helping other people is because that drive is met. I'm, I'm on go mode, I'm going. But when I don't have a team and I have all this time in the world, my personal recruits goes down <laughs> because I don't have that motivation of helping other people. So that happens. Just like anything else, we have our highs and we have our lows, we have our ups, and we have our downs. So right now I'm in a brand new city I've never been in before. I don't know anybody around. And I'm having difficulty in building here because typically if I present to someone, they sign up. I present someone, they sign up. I do pretty well in a market that I have credibility. In a market when you don't, 
people don't know you and that's not going to happen. But does that stop you from moving forward? Absolutely not. So what are the things that I'm doing to start a brand new market? Here's some steps. I know a lot of people talk about going out and peeking people at the mall or walking by, whatever you're doing. Yes, that's absolutely great. But I like to build those relationships. So a couple of things that I do, and I don't know if you guys have done them yet, to find new prospects because we have to start over sometimes. One of the things, the first thing I did is I looked for networking groups. Who are like-minded individuals that get together to meet people to help each other? Because even if I join a networking group and no one wants to sign up as a rep in ACN, the rep networking group has 20 people. Well, when deregulation happens, I know at minimum I have 20 electricity customers. <laughs> So that's okay. At minimum, as long as I build that relationship, as long as I understand what they're doing and I help send them referrals as well, those 20 people that are going to be my clients, they're going to send me referrals, which will turn into 40, 50, 100, just from one small group. So are you out there looking for networking groups? And I didn't know, sometimes people don't even know what that means. It's people that get together and they refer business among one another. That's what a networking group, one of the first ones I looked into and they're not pushing or selling anything, but it was a BNI, Business Networking International, because I know they are everywhere. So I said, cool, that's the first group I know I can find is a BNI. And in a BNI, when you're allowed to visit, or you, they do have a membership, you don't have to pay, I visited BNI. And I met someone who told me another a networking meeting called Coffee Connect. And this is with the uh, Texas, the uh, Texas Tech alumni something supporting the texas tech and this is a huge football city so i said absolutely that's the best thing i went to the coffee connect and then i got invited to uh they called it last call before football season so you get to uh just come and hang out and have a good time before the season starts at the stadium and it was this big event where i met all kinds of entrepreneurs from dentists to real estate brokers to uh people that are just sales reps whatever it is and it was an opportunity to network now are you going out and are you doing these things from there Someone said, hey, I know you're new in town and you're trying to meet people. There's going to be a, real, uh, a ribbon cutting at this real estate brokerage. And I said, absolutely. I'm there, whatever I can do to support. I know you guys want to take pictures. You want to show a crowd of people. I'm there at this ribbon cutting. Then all of a sudden, there's a uh, customer appreciation at a chiropractor's office. So what are you doing to build your network? Are you going to these things? Are you saying, no, you know what? I've had a long day. I don't want to go to this customer appreciation. All I did was went around and I, I got an adjustment. Woohoo! <laughs> I talked to chiropractors, but they have vendors from all of these different areas. I talked to someone who has his own farm. It's a farmer's market where he mails people produce. And um, he was like, I have electricity on my farm. Let's talk. And I said, absolutely. So are you going to these networking events? Are you meeting people? What are you doing beyond your everyday and just peeking people in line at a target? Because that's hard. That really is difficult to, to build that relationship with someone in line. And absolutely, let's do it. I was at the car dealership and my plates came in. And as I was walking out, one of the salesmen helped to put on my plates. So I peeked him and I said, wow, this is awesome. You went above and beyond. I'm really interested in getting to know you a little bit better. I'm still building here in San Antonio. Is there an opportunity where we can connect possibly over Zoom since I don't live here anymore? And I can tell you a little bit about what I do. And maybe this can help um, that those down times in between car sales. He's been with the car dealership for two weeks. So he hadn't had a car sale. So he's 100% open. So absolutely, we have those peaks. But are you going are you doing other things to build those relationships with people? Because as we build them and they start getting to know what you do, I've had more no's recently than I've ever had in my life because people don't know me. They like it. They like the opportunity. It looks good. But they're like, who is this woman? So once they see, as I progress, as I grow, I create those relationships. And they're like, you know what? I do want to give this a try. It could be a month from now. It could be two months from now. All I know is that we need to build those relationships. And as you're exchanging those numbers, are you texting them the next day? Hey, Jessica, it was so great to meet you. Um, whatever the conversation was, I talked to someone about food. I was like, oh, man, you need to let me know some restaurants. I said, hey, it was so great to meet you. I'm looking forward and connecting with you and you showing me the best restaurants in town. And the next day, I got a picture of her lunch. And she said, absolutely, this is our lunch today. When are you free to go to lunch? That simple, y'all. <laughs>
relationship bot. Yes, relationship buoy. Absolutely. That's what we have to do. That's one thing that I do when my drive goes away. So my drive is to help other people in Lubbock. I'm not having a great success at building a team right now, but I promise you I will. Why? Because I don't stop. Because I build those relationships. I make sure I talk to people and I go above and beyond other things. I could, I mean, there are other things I could be doing. I could be on Zoom all day long and talking to other people and other networks that I have, which I do. I have people in other areas, other networks. I could still grow ACN. But how does that help me build what's going on here in Lubbock? How does that help me? Because I moved all the way out here to be by myself. I got to go out and make sure I'm not always by myself when I start creating a network. And I'm actually creating a network group for myself. So once we get a few people, then we're going to pick a restaurant. I'm going to bring that restaurant business. I'm going to talk to the restaurant owner and the managers. Say, hey, can we meet in this room? Can we meet here um, once a week for an hour so we can get to know each other a little bit better? And then it brings you business as well. So are you thinking about these things and how you can help other people grow their business, how you can bring business to them? It's a giver's game mentality. We want to make sure that we're open and truly listening to people and giving. The more we give, the more we gain. Absolutely, I believe that 100%. And what's so different about the area that I'm in right now and that's creating um, these relationships is the fact that I am only focused on electricity because when we deregulate, I don't want anybody to get confused what I do. I say, hey, electricity, 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 that's all that I do. So right now I can't even sign up any electricity customers. They aren't deregulated yet. I am here planting the seeds and it is rough when you don't know when it's going to happen. They keep asking me and they're like, oh, we'll wait when it gets closer. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> so as you're planting those seeds, and we're starting to get to know these people. I can't sign up any customers, what I'm doing. And my elevator pitch, make sure you have an elevator pitch for these networking groups, is I am here to educate as we deregulate. What I saw and need in this area is nobody knows what's happening. Nobody understands. We're in an area so far away from large cities. I think we're about five hours from Dallas, five hours from Sam Foster, five and a half from San Antonio. And we're just a small little area that's so um, desolate from everything. You think about back roads, country, Texas, that's where I'm at. <laughs> so they don't understand and they don't know what deregulation is, but they're hearing a lot of things about it. And they're hearing a lot of people say, oh, come with us and we'll save you money. There's 70 different companies that are coming in here. We'll save money. We'll save money. And they're like, I don't believe that. And this is an area, it's who you know. They want to make sure that they trust you. And a lot of these larger companies aren't doing that. So how I promote myself is just say, hey, I'm here to educate as we deregulate. Just any questions you have, let me know. I break it down simply as possible. I don't throw in numbers and go all technical like a lot of people do, and they respect me for that. And I've heard from so many people like, wow, I've had people come into the Chamber of Commerce. They've come in here. They've given presentations. I don't understand a thing, but now I have a better understanding of what's going on because now you've explained it to me. People aren't just going to sign up with anybody willy nilly. They have to know that you will help them understand what's happening because they want to make sure that you have their best interest in mind. I kind of bounced around a little bit, but um, that's what I got for you guys today. Hopefully I threw out some ideas that you can go and you can take with you and actually start peaking more people, start building those relationships. And it's the long-term route. It really sometimes takes a while to build a relationship, but I will tell you, it probably took because I had so much going on. Mr. Ryan Ruiz um, is my direct sponsor. I want to say it took him three weeks before I signed up in the business because I didn't know who the heck he was and I didn't trust him. I met him at an event and then he peaked me and then he presented to me and I'm like, who is this guy presenting to me right away? Like, you're supposed to be building this relationship. So you don't know much about me, my business. Like, how are we supposed to help each other out when I feel you're only helping yourself out? But he continued to follow up. He continued to let me know he was understanding what I was doing. Oh, you're a locksmith. I know a bunch of real estate agents. He put me in front of real estate agents. Three weeks later, I signed up in the business. And here I am, y'all. He has a regional director on our way to regional vice president. <laughs> so I hope that helps. I hope you go on and do something this week and let me know how it goes. Something new, a networking group, a ribbon cutting. You can show up for 15 minutes. I promise you'll get a lot more if you show up for an hour. But get yourself out there and do something different and talk to people and exchange numbers 
genuinely, not to think about recruits, but a genuinely exchange a phone number and get to know someone. Thank you so much, y'all. I hope you have a fantastic week and please let me know what comes up from all this.